Welcome to Sharon B. Making Stuff. As you can tell, we are stepping it up on this channel because today I'm going to show you guys how to make a pie from scratch. This one has a super delicious spiced apple and peach filling, which I think is pretty unique, and I think you guys are going to love it. I've also attempted at doing a lattice top for the first time, and it turned out pretty successful, I would say. If you'd like to learn how to impress your family and friends this holiday season with a pie made from scratch, did I emphasize that enough? Then let's go ahead and get started. So starting off with the filling, you're going to need three Granny Smith apples and three peaches. I am using yellow peaches today because that's the only one I could find in my grocery store. If you have another kind of peach, I'm pretty sure it will work as well. You are also going to need one orange and one lemon. And to start us off, we are going to peel all the apples and all the peaches. One little tip I have is to just keep a bowl nearby to keep all your fruit scraps and then later it's easier to throw it in the compost, if you do compost. Next up, we are going to core all of the apples and all of the peaches. When it comes to slicing the fruit, you're going to cut them into two centimeter, or for those of you who do not use metric, about an inch thick pieces. Um, if you cut them too thin, they're going to be real mushy real quick. If you cut them too thick, they are going to take a long time to cook. Moving on to the lemon, you're going to give it a quick roll, we're going to zest it until you have about one teaspoon of fresh lemon zest and then you can slice your lemon and juice it until you have two teaspoons of fresh lemon juice. And you're going to repeat the same steps for your orange. So once you have both citrus fruits all zested and juiced, you can add those ingredients to the apples that you just sliced and transfer everything over to a large saucepan. The next part of the filling is to make a slurry with cornstarch and water. I'm using 30 grams of cornstarch and 80 grams of cold water. This part is super important. I've tried making pie filling without the cornstarch before and it just turned out way too runny so this part is going to thicken it up to give our filling that caramelized sweetness we are using three quarter cups of firmly packed brown sugar and for spices we are using three quarter teaspoons of ground cinnamon one eighth teaspoons of nutmeg one eighth teaspoon of clove and a quarter teaspoon of salt at the very end we are also going to throw in 30 grams of butter also, I apologize in advance if I am confusing you by switching between the metric versions of capacity and weight measurements. You can always convert it if you need to. Alrighty, so let's get cooking. So you're going to cook your apples on medium low heat until the liquids start to simmer. And I did it this way because the apples do take longer. And then after about a couple minutes, I threw in the peaches and then I added my slurry and I simmered it until the liquid started to thicken and clear. And that's when you know the cornstarch has activated and it is ready. After that, you're going to take it off the heat or just turn off the heat and fold in the sugar, the salt, the cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, and at the very end, add in that 30 grams of butter. And you're going to simmer this for an additional few minutes and then you're going to let it cool before adding it to the pie. So this is what my filling looks like after I've taken it off the heat and I'm just going to let it sit while I work on my pie crust. 
So moving on to the pie dough, I'm using half a cup of unsalted cold butter cut into half inch cubes as well as half a cup of cold vegetable shortening cut into half inch cubes. To that I am adding two cups of all purpose flour and I'm also going to dissolve half a teaspoon of salt into quarter cup of ice water and it's super important that you're using ice water because you don't want to melt the butter in the process. So we're going to start by mixing the fats and the flour together just in a stand-up mixer fitted with a paddle attachment. We're going to mix it on low speed until the fats are in small chunks. People like to compare it to the size of peas um, and you're going to do this for about 10 to 15 seconds. After that you can start adding a little bit of salt water at a time, about one tablespoon. And you're going to mix very gently, making sure not to overwork it. Some small lumps of fat should be visible in the dough and that is exactly what you want. So once the pie dough has started to come together a little bit, you can transfer it over to a work surface and just shape and roll the dough into two balls. Um, to make it cool faster, if you're on a time crunch, you can flatten them into discs because bigger surface area, faster it's gonna cool, science, you know what I'm saying? So um, after that, you can wrap it in plastic wrap and just stick it in the fridge for about two hours or you can just leave it overnight. If at this point you are still able to see some fat chunks in your dough, then you deserve a virtual high five for not melting your fats and not over mixing your pie dough. After your pie dough is done chilling in the fridge, you can take it out and lightly flour your work surface and place the disc right in the middle and start rolling it out with a rolling pin. I like to start from the center and work my way outwards and if you notice that your pie dough is still a little bit too cold and it's cracking in some places like mine is as you can tell, do not panic, just slowly work at it because the heat from your hands is going to melt the butter very quickly so you gotta kind of work quickly but don't work so fast that everything's falling apart <laughs> So in terms of thickness, you'll want to row the dough out to about half a centimeter thick or a quarter inch thick. And you can stop when the size is about the size of the pie dish that you are using. And today I'm using a glass pie dish because I find that these ones retain the heat much better and it ensures an even cooking time and it doesn't burn the crust. So when rolling out pie dough, usually what I would do is roll out both balls and then I would compare them and then choose the nicer one for the top and then leave the not so nice one for the bottom because nobody's really going to see the bottom anyway. So to prepare the pieces for the lattice top, we are going to use a pizza cutter and cut out six one inch strips. So to transfer the rolled out pie dough to the dish, it takes a little bit of patience, I'm going to tell you right now. I had to use a bench scraper and then after unsticking it from the bottom, I rolled it onto the rolling pin first and then rolled it out onto the pie dish. And because my piece didn't roll out into a perfect circle, um, I did a little bit of patchwork and just ripped off some extras and other parts and stuck it onto the pieces that required a little bit more dough because why not you can totally do that so by now my filling has been sitting for about a few hours and you can tell that it's not runny or anything it's not overly juicy it's perfect so now i'm going to put all the filling into the lined pie dish and making sure that you fill it up to the rim but not overflowing. So after filling in the pie shell, it is time to create the lattice on the top of the pie. So start off by placing one of those strips in the middle, another one on the top and another one on the bottom, making sure they are kind of evenly spaced out. So I think it might be easier to just watch and see how I do it instead of me trying to explain. But if you learn better through audio, then I guess this is how you're going to do it. So how about we number them to make it a little bit easier to keep track of. So you're going to lift up number one and three, place another piece underneath, 
and fold over number one and three. Next you're going to lift up number two, place another piece, and then fold number two back down. And then you're going to repeat. Lift up number one and three, again, place your last piece, and then fold it back down. And that is it, a beautiful lattice. All done. So now we gotta clean up the edge of the pie because it's looking a little bit rough. And to do this, you're just going to fold in all the edges to make a nice thick border that kind of looks like a rope. So to make it look even more impressive and to show your friends and families that you are in fact very capable of making a pie from scratch, more emphasis on that, you can crimp the borders by using your knuckle and pinching it inwards and making it look like that. Yeah, that looks good. You got this. And now the next step is to freeze the pie for 30 minutes to firm up some of the fat in that pie crust and keep everything in place before we brush on the egg wash and bake it. Okay, so before we bake it in the oven, we have to do the washing with the egg. So I just cracked a whole egg into a bowl, gave it a little whisk, and I'm just brushing it directly onto the pie. Um, this is going to give it a very nice bake and color when it comes out. And at the very end, we can sprinkle it with some granulated sugar to give it that nice crunch. And yes, you can be very generous with this part because if you're not, then there's really no point in adding the sugar on top. All right, so it looks like the pie is ready to go into the oven. We are going to bake it at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 60 to 65 minutes, but it also depends on your oven and the type of pie dish that you are using. So make sure you keep an eye on it. To check for doneness, you are going to look for um, curling of the edges. The base will become loose a little bit and it's going to turn a beautiful golden brown color. As well, you'll notice that the filling is bubbling, just like this. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed following me along and learning how to make a pie from scratch. Emphasis once again. Um, if you ever try out this recipe, please let me know. This is one that I have never seen before and I kind of thought the spices and the apples and the peaches would go well together and boy was I right. It did taste absolutely delicious. And um, you'll notice that when I cut into the pie, it's not a complete dripping disaster. Everything holds together very well and it's one solid delicious piece and it will taste even better with vanilla ice cream. So anyway, please give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to Share and Be Making Stuff and I will see you guys or talk to you in my next video. Bye.